everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. My name is Dina. I am so happy to have you guys here. Today we are talking about candle magic. I really wanted to do this video because I find that candle magic is one of my most used practices. It is very simple. You don't have to do anything super elaborate. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's really good if you're someone who's very busy like me and doesn't have a lot of time to invest in super long rituals and stuff. So if that is something that interests you, make sure you guys keep watching. So first of all, what is candle magic? Magic. Just to kind of give you a brief explanation, candle magic is utilizing the energy of candles, the fire element, to basically bring something into manifestation, some sort of goal, some sort of intention. Although candles embody the energy of fire, that's not the only element that you're necessarily working with when you work with candle magic. So like for example, if you add herbs for anointing, then you're also working with the earth. If you use your breath to blow the candle, you're also working with the air element. Like there's so many different things and we're going to get into more detail about that but the candle itself is working with the fire element and I find working with the fire element just so powerful very effective for manifesting and I actually have a video all about fire magic so if you guys are interested in that I'll make sure to link that below for you guys first we're going to talk about the different tools involved in candle magic obviously there's candles <laughs> and candles can be spell candles that look like this they can be tea light candles you can work with sometimes you find like other candles from little shops like I got these a gift they're so adorable I haven't used them yet because they're so pretty and I'm like I need the perfect use for them and I need to catch them on camera if you don't have access to any of these things guys really simple thing to do is use birthday candles birthday candles come in so many different colors so you'll have various color options for different correspondences now I know a lot of people like to use different colored candles for different spells and stuff and it is nice to have different colors for different correspondences which we'll talk about all those correspondences in this video as well but tea light candles are also a good and easy go to if you don't have those options and the nice thing about white as we'll talk about is it can be programmed for anything but it's really nice when you don't have access to spell candles because not everyone does I get my spell candles from my local spiritual shop so if you do have an occult shop near you they probably will have these otherwise you can order them online another common tool that is used in candle magic are anointing oils oils can be used to rub on the candle and then add your herbs of choice or your salts this adds an extra intention obviously the act of anointing the candle putting the time in that and like carefully choosing what you're using in that anointing process is going to give it more meaning and is going to give it more power now there's so many different oils you can use you can even purchase anointing oils that would just sell on like Etsy and stuff if you don't want to make your own this is a psychic oil that I made myself and I find that an oil that has a more stickier base is gonna work the best because it's gonna allow you to stick the herbs to the candle whereas if it's just a really watered down essential oil for example it's not gonna to stick the same so it's really good to have an oil blend so you can use essential oils but making sure you have a base that's gonna allow you to stick things is really important like the base of this one is black castor oil and castor oil is quite thick and sticky so it's really good for anointing candles and then of course herbs and salts are often used too in candle magic because these are various ingredients that we're gonna use to give more intention to the spell so different herbs represent different things so choosing an herb that obviously means something to you and matches the corresponding of what you're trying to achieve is going to be the most helpful so you can use different herbs flowers salts anything that is going to work for you essentially another tool that is often used in candle magic is some sort of carving tool so that you can engrave something into the candle we're going to talk more about what you might engrave into the candle later in this video but yeah you can use something sharp you can use like a wooden dowel type thing that's maybe pointy I lately actually have just been enjoying using my nails there's something super personal about just using your own nail to carve out a candle obviously that's not going to be an option for everyone if someone has fake nails or if you have like no nails and your like your nails are really really short that's not going to be very helpful either and then obviously you're gonna need something to light your candles I prefer matches just because I just I don't know there's something about matches the natural wood of it and everything and I like to stay away from lighters just because the plastic if you have like a reusable lighter that you can refill instead of just throwing away so much plastic then that's a better option now when it comes to putting out the candle we're gonna talk of different ways to do that and why you might choose different ways to do that but you might have a candle snuffer this is one that I got where did I get this I think I may have ordered this one on some sort of site online but you might use a candle snuffer you might just use your own breath you might use this for some things and your breath for other things and again I'll talk about that but just something that you might want to have in your collection but there's other things that you might incorporate too like when I do candle spells sometimes I like to create an altar space and I like to have crystals and set the mood with other things other symbols of things it's nice 
nice to create sacred space. It's nice to have cleansing tools too to cleanse your space before you do a candle spell. So yes, there's other things that might be involved, but that's gonna look different for different people. The main things that you wanna take into account here are the candle, something to light the candle, something to anoint the candle, something to carve the candle. And those are the basic tools that you'll need for a candle spell. All right, let's talk about the fun part. Well, it's all the fun part, but <laughs> we're gonna talk about color correspondences. Now, before I get into these, I just wanna make it very clear that these are gonna be different for different people. The color correspondences that I'm going to be talking about in this video are very common beliefs held by a lot of people around the world. And because they're common beliefs, they do hold a lot of power because the more people that believe in something, the more power it is given. It's like a collective consciousness type thing. Yes, these are really great to start off with, but if there's something that is different for you, something that you believe that is different, that is okay. Also, you want to take into consideration that a lot of these correspondences are from like the Western world, whereas different parts of the world are going to have different beliefs. Some areas of the world may not see green as a money color because they don't have green bills like we do. So it's gonna be so different depending on what your beliefs are, what area in the world you're from. It could just be a very personal thing where a certain color just means something to you. So follow your instincts, follow what feels good to you. But this is just a really good place to start. So white, the most simple color, really easy because you can get it in tea light candles. So white is a universal use candle. Just like clear quartz is a universal crystal that can be programmed for like any use, any intention. The white candle is basically that too. So if you were unable to get your hands on any other colored candle, then having at least white candles is gonna be very helpful for you. White candles also represent purity, new beginnings, protection, peace, calming, and truth. I tend to gravitate towards white candles for peace spells and protection spells. Like those are very common reasons why I will use a white candle. Black candles, I say black candles are one of my most used colored candles to be completely honest. Um, black candles can also be used for protection. So depending on what you are dealing with is going to determine whether or not you use a black or a white candle. For me personally, I choose white candles for protection when it comes to just like putting a protective light or just like protective energy, protective positive loving energy around somebody or yourself. Whereas the black candle I see is more in protection for really negative stuff. Like if there's something clearly negative that you're trying to protect yourself from, you feel like a negative energy energy or somebody is hurting you or something like that, that is when I would go towards a black candle versus a white candle, if that makes any sense. Black candles are also really good for banishing. So if there's something really negative in your life that you need to get rid of or a negative energy that's attaching to you, then black candles are really good for that. Black candles are also used for removing hexes, jinxes, curses, things like that. Those are very unlikely to happen. <laughs> usually it's just a little negative energy that you need to clear out. People usually don't have the energy or the time to curse you or anything like that. The chances of that happening are very slim, but you can use that candle in that sort of situation. If you have that issue, usually the spells are a little bit more elaborate, so you definitely want to do more research on that. But black candles could also be used for things like binding and other baneful magic. Blue candles. Now where I go for my candles, they actually have dark blue like this one, and they have a light blue. And then they also have a light purple and a dark purple and a light green and a dark green. So you may see that sometimes. Sometimes you can find different meanings for light and dark on the internet as well. I'm just going to talk about the basic colors in this video, but when we get to green, I will tell you what I use the dark and the light for because sometimes you can use that to distinguish between two different types of spells that you tend to do in your own practice, just to like separate them a bit instead of using the same shade of candle, but I'll explain that to you when I get there. So blue candles are really good for justice and peace of mind. They're also good for forgiveness, communication, focus, inspiration, emotional healing, and they're also connected to to the water element. Yeah, if there's some healing that you need to do, some emotional stuff that you're going through, working with a blue candle could be really good for that. Green, okay, so this is where we're gonna talk about shades because I have a light green candle and I have a dark green candle. Now, green in general is good for money magic. It's also good for good luck, prosperity, um, anything related to earth or like earth magic. Now, I just wanted to specify why I have these two candles. I'm currently using this dark green candle for anything money magic related. I actually have a money jar spell and I have the candle like stuck to the top of the jar. There's an example. So I know in my practice that whenever I use a dark candle, like a dark green, it's associated with money. But then I wanted to do a altar space dedicated to Gaia. So when I created this, I'm like, okay, I want a candle for Gaia. And like, I thought like, what color candle would I use? And I could use any bright color, honestly, because you know, I think flowers too with Gaia and stuff, but I really felt green would be good for Gaia. But I'm like, I don't really want to use the dark green because I use that for money. So then I'm like, you know what, light 
light green. This is the perfect way to distinguish two different types of spells. I'll use light green for Gaia for my altar space and then I'll use dark green for money magic. So that's just an example of how you can take the colors and kind of personalize them to your practice. All right, so let's talk about red candles. I have to say I don't work with red candles very often, but red is really good for love magic or lust or libido or confidence because it has a very fiery energy. It's also really good for glamour magic, courage and strength. Orange candles. Orange candles can be really good for communication spells. They're good for intellect, for good luck related to your career, which also for career luck and stuff, you could use like a green candle because it's kind of connected to good luck, prosperity, money and stuff. So really go with what you feel works for you, whether you want to do an orange or a green or maybe something else like gold may actually work for that, which we'll talk about gold as well. Orange is also really good for networking, legal affairs and just joy. So maybe you're just feeling down and you need a little bit more joyful energy in your life, then working with an orange candle may be very effective for you. Next, we're going to talk about yellow. Yellow is really good for focus, creativity, learning, mental blocks, clarity, confidence, joy, and happiness. I've also used a yellow candle for creative blocks too. I believe I've used orange as well. So you can use either one of those for like creativity blocks. Pink candles. Pink is for love. It's for romance. I use pink specifically for self-love spells. Pink candles can also be used for warmth, joy, friendship, also forgiveness, self-compassion, self-forgiveness is included in this too. So not just forgiveness of someone else, but maybe you need to forgive yourself. Purple is connected to psychic powers. So think that like indigo purple color for like the third eye chakra. And also like you may use candles to connect to different chakras too. So it may not necessarily be the things I'm giving you, but maybe you just want to connect to a specific chakra. So you use the color associated with that chakra. But anyways, psychic powers, third eye, meditation, divination, maybe dream work. Maybe use this candle to do a candle spell before you go to bed. Obviously don't want to leave it unattended. Don't fall asleep with the candle on, but you may find it helps you with lucid dreaming and stuff if you do a spell before bedtime. You can also use it for like spiritual awakening and awareness. So anything spiritual related, psychic related, that's usually what purple candles are used for. Now the next two, I don't actually currently have candles to show you. So gold candles are for prosperity, for health, for personal power, success. And they're also connected to the masculine energy. So maybe you have an imbalance of your energies. Maybe you're very heavy feminine energy, or maybe you're heavy masculine energy. You know, using the opposite candle to bring in that energy would be very helpful. Silver is actually considered feminine energy. It's connected to intuition, dreams, psychic abilities, and also the moon. So if you're working with the shadow self, that moon energy, then you might want to work with the silver candle. Those are all the correspondences that I'm going to talk about today. Let's move on to the next section of the video. So I just want to go through the steps of, you know, doing a candle spell, especially if you're not specifically following a spell in your book. How do you go about creating your own candle spell? First of all, the thing I want to always start on is getting clear about my purpose. Like, what am I trying to achieve here? Be very specific because even when you think you said what you wanted and you got the point across, sometimes things don't work out completely like you thought they would. Sometimes the universe works in really weird ways. So number two is choose your materials. So obviously when I'm doing a candle spell, the first thing I decide on is what color am I using? What color is gonna really get my intention across? Follow your gut on that. And then also you're gonna choose your other materials. So you're gonna choose your oil, you're gonna choose your herbs. And again, when you're choosing your herbs, you're gonna decide what herbs are best based on the correspondences. Once I have everything that I need for the spell, before I even get started, I create my sacred space. So I make sure I set up a good altar space. Sometimes I'll put crystals, sometimes I'll put like some other representation. Like I have a giant Rider Waite tarot deck and I like to use those cards specifically for spells and rituals to represent a certain energy. So sometimes I'll do that. You wanna like obviously cleanse the space too. You can do like a sound cleanse, smoke cleanse, whatever works for you. But just like set the space first. The next thing I tend to do is I will carve into my candle. So again, I usually will use my fingernail to carve into the candle. Now when I'm carving into the candle, there's so many different things you can do. So you can write out your intention. So exactly what's gonna happen. It obviously depends on how much space you have on the candle. So I try to make it as specific, but also as simple as possible. You might not write down your intention on the candle. You may carve symbols instead. Like for example, maybe you're doing a money spell. Maybe you don't write down like, oh, I will receive this much money by this time. Maybe you just want to carve in some dollar signs onto the candle, or maybe you use sigils. Maybe there's certain sigils that mean a lot to you and you've already worked with them a lot. Or maybe you use runes. Like runes also hold a lot of meaning. So 
there's so many different ways to do this. Once I actually carve out my candle, that is when I go in and anoint it. You don't want to anoint it first and then try to carve your candle and it's a big mess and you can't do it. Then I take the oil and I rub the oil all over the candle and then I would add in the herbs, which you usually kind of have to like tap it on, kind of just like to get it to stick like that. And then yeah, once the candle is completely covered, that's when you can go to light it. When I light my candle, that is, I find the most, not the most important time, but I really like to make sure I'm focused on the candle when I light it and I'm thinking of my intention or I'm speaking it out loud. And then once the candle is lit, this is the time where you want to meditate on the candle for a bit. Now I'm not saying you have to watch the entire candle go down because these can last a couple hours and to stare at a candle for two hours straight without doing anything else can be quite difficult. But I do meditate on it for a little while. I do. I like to really focus on the flame, focus my energy on the flame, think about what's going to happen when the candle's done burning. I often declare out loud, once this candle has finished burning, such and such will happen, so what would it be? Obviously, I'll keep an eye on the candle. Every so often, I may focus my energy on the candle again and kind of pour some more intention into it, but I never leave the candle unattended. So make sure you're always in the same room as the candle. Sometimes it feels right to just let the candle burn out on its own. Sometimes it feels good to extinguish it with this. Sometimes it feels good to blow it out. So this is really going to depend on the person and it's also going to depend on the spell. So for example, when I do a banishing spell, I actually like to blow it out. So I'll wait until it's almost finished because I don't want to waste the candle. When it's almost done, that's when I'll blow on it. And not just blow, but like blow. <laughs> the way that you blow on the candle can also mean a lot too. Like, are you blowing softly? Are you blowing aggressively? When you want to get rid of something in your life, it makes sense to like harshly blow on the candle and be like, I want you gone. Get out of my life type of thing, right? But that's what I do. So for example, like maybe I'm doing a manifestation spell, which honestly, when I do a manifestation spell, I actually kind of like to let the candle just burn out on its own. I just think it just needs its own time and just let it do its thing. But some people do like blowing out the candle because they believe that it's working with the air element and they're blowing intention into the world or they're blowing life into this intention so it really depends on which way you look at it sometimes I do that like I've had certain spells where I'm like okay I feel good about blowing this out but like I blow it out a little bit softer like enough to blow it out but it's just more of like elongated like you know just like blowing my intention into the world but the way that you do something down to the detail of your breath can actually mean a lot of different things. The next thing I wanna talk about is disposal. So when you're disposing your ingredients, there's certain things to keep in mind. So if my mixture of my like anointing mixture involves salt, I always just throw it in the garbage. You don't wanna throw salt outside because it actually is awful for soil. It throws the soil out of balance. It's not good for microorganisms. Otherwise, a lot of things can be just thrown out into the ground outside or buried or something like that. So if it's just regular herbs. So I wanted to give you some other candles spell examples. So one spell I want to talk about are cord cutting rituals and in the case of a cord cutting ritual you'll actually need some twine or string as well. So that is another tool that I didn't mention in the beginning but it's only necessary for something like a cord cutting ritual. So in this case you'll actually need to use two candles. Now the way I personally do a cord cutting ritual is I will actually have a different color for each person. Someone may just use two white candles because that's what they had access to. That is fine too. We're also going to carve the name of the person in there. So when I did a cord cutting ritual in the past, which I've only had to do it once before, and it's really going to depend on the situation, guys. So only do this if you're really, really done with the person. If there's still part of you that's kind of holding on and you don't feel ready, like energetically ready to actually do something that finalized, don't do it yet. So you're going to choose a candle for each person. So let's say this is the other person. Let's say this is me. I'm going to carve my name into my candle, and then I'm going to carve the other person's name into their candle. And then what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna tie some twine around the candles so that they're connected. <laughs> and I'm not gonna actually do it now, but just to kind of give you an idea, they're gonna be connected, right? And then you're gonna light both candles and you're just gonna let them burn. And for this one, I don't like to blow them out. I don't like to put them out or anything. I like to let them just do their thing, run their course. Because first of all, you're gonna let them burn until the string, the twine is broken in the middle because they'll do that on its own with time. Eventually the fire will catch and they'll separate in the middle. And 
and that is symbolic of that cord being cut, that energetic bond being cut, so you can be free of this person. Once that's done, it's not done. Let the candles burn because the way the candles burn will actually be symbolic in a way. Maybe one candle burns faster than the other. Maybe one candle's really holding on and it's having a hard time letting go. There's different things that you can find. It's almost like divination in the candles in a way. So this is something to pay attention to, something maybe you want to journal. Maybe you notice that the person's candle takes a really long time to burn out and it just doesn't want to go. That could be energetically representing the fact that they are pushing back. They don't want to let you go. And sometimes maybe a cord cutting ritual won't work right away. Maybe they energetically sense that you were trying to let them go and they're not okay with that. It may take a couple more. It may take like a banishing ritual. There's so many other things to consider in this situation. I found mine worked. Like I just had to do one cord cutting ritual and it was fine, but it's going to really depend on the person that you're dealing with as well. Now I just want to give you a couple other helpful tips and stuff for working with candle magic. So I've already mentioned, be specific. Don't be scared to set deadlines, set timelines for your spells because those can actually be very effective. But I also want to mention, like don't get discouraged if it doesn't work right away. Cause sometimes you do spells that don't work and that's just part of practicing. You know, you learn what works for you. You get better at your practice. That's why it's called a practice. It's just going to take some trial and error as well to decide on like what works for you because maybe it's a matter of channeling your energy and at first you're not good at that but then you get better at that with time so don't get discouraged keep working at it keep trying if something doesn't work the first way then try a new way experiment with it and that brings me to my last tip that I want to share with you make sure you are keeping track of your successful spells that work really well for you like I'm actually in the process of doing this because I have written out all my spells on like little pieces of paper and they've always kind of just been random sheets of paper that I've just kind of kept in a box so I've actually been going through the process of rewriting all my spells in this little book but I'm gonna eventually decorate it and write it out in pen and everything but yeah this is gonna be essentially my spell book like just spells and rituals and stuff that worked well for me that I don't want to forget so once I actually have this a little bit more polished and everything I'm actually gonna give you guys a little like spell book tour because I'm doing title pages for like each section and I want to make it look really pretty but I recommend doing something like this so I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up because it lets me know that you liked this video and it also just helps my channel out a lot so I really appreciate it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I post new videos every single week and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on them. I hope you have a beautiful day or night whenever you're watching this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!